Hey guys, it's Chef from Pressure Luck, and I wanted to do a Cinco de Mayo recipe. It's a little early for it when I'm releasing this, but you know, I love Mexican food. It's one of my favorite cuisines ever, and uh, I love elote, which is Mexican-style street corn, which is basically the most amazing corn that has this, that's like this cotija creamy chili powder sauce on it. It's to die for delicious. I actually have a recipe for that on my blog and in my lighter blue book, believe it or not. But I wanted to make a chowder that is inspired by this amazing, amazing Mexican street corn and just simply call it elote chowder. It is so delicious, it's so easy to make and uh, you're gonna see, it's, it's a party. And by the way, people always ask me, your Bucky's hat, I love Bucky's and I love Bucky's too. I wish you were Bucky's near where I live. However, I got this one in Alabama. There's one just outside of Mobile um, and that's where I got this one, but I know they're very prevalent in Texas. I think there's possibly some in Tennessee and Georgia. Don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but whenever I go to Alabama to visit Richard's family with Richard, it's always a stop at Bucky's and of course, Beaver nuggets always have to happen in a brisket sandwich. And, um, you know, I might have to use their bathroom because of the cleanest gas station bathrooms you'll ever see, but we don't need to get into that. Let's get into a lote corn chowder. Let's do it. So we're gonna start off with our veggies and I want one medium yellow onion, a poblano pepper, but if you can't find a poblano pepper, you can just use a green bell pepper. And optionally, for a little bit of spice, you don't have to add it, one jalapeno pepper. And I've just diced everything up. And it's also worth noting, because I'm including the jalapeno in my version here, uh, that I've removed the ribs and seeds from the jalapeno. It cuts the spice down a little bit, although I don't find jalapenos to be super spicy. On a scale of one to 10, I'd give them about a four to a five. But again, they're completely optional. You don't have to add them. And if you want extra spice, feel free to leave the seeds and ribs intact. And now it's time for our potatoes. In this situation, you can use Idaho or russet potatoes if you want, also known as baking potatoes. Uh, or you can just use like a baby potato of any color that you choose and leave the skins on here. If I was gonna use an Idaho potato, I'd peel them first. But with these, I'm just gonna rinse them and leave the skins on. And then just cut them into like quarters or so, each little one there. Each basically piece of potato, whatever you use, should just be cut into like a tiny little bite-sized piece like that. All right, now let's go to the pot. Now to my Instant Pot, I'm gonna add in four tablespoons or a half a stick of salted butter and give it some heat. Now I'll come down on my control panel and hit that saute button and make sure I'm on the more or high setting. If my pot has a start button, I gotta hit that. If it doesn't, it'll start on its own after a few moments of doing nothing. And now that the butter's melted and bubbling, I'm gonna add in my onion and my peppers. And I'll saute them in the butter for about three to five minutes until they soften a bit. Okay, and after about a few minutes of sauteing our veggies, again, about three to five minutes is all you really need here. You can even go for three if you want to speed it along. We're going to add in our next ingredient, and that is going to be three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. It's almost like I'm making a little roux here. And immediately we want to stir the flour so it's completely coating all of our veggies in the pot. We don't want it to get stuck onto the bottom, so we're going to do this very quickly. All right, just make sure everything's coated. Next up is our broth. I want to add in three cups of, you could use either chicken or garlic broth for this. And I immediately want to stir everything around in the pot, make sure I'm scraping the bottom to get any flour off of it. We don't want that stuck to the bottom there. Lastly, I want to add in a few final touches, and that's going to be optionally one tablespoon of some sherry wine. Gives it a nice little touch, you don't have to add it. My potatoes. And between 16 to 20 to 24 ounces of frozen corn kernels, Get what you get in the supermarket in the frozen food section, just add that in there. And now just give everything a final stir. The pot's gonna be pretty loaded, and that's perfect. That's what we want it to be like. All right, now we're ready to pressure cook. I'm going to secure my lid, make sure that I'm in the sealing position. Now we'll come back down to our control panel, hit the cancel button, and then we're gonna hit the pressure cook or manual button, depending on your model. Wanna go first for five minutes at high pressure, and that is it, my friends, that is it. Soup's up, time to quick release. And the pin just dropped, so we're gonna take the lid off the pot. And there's our soup so far, although it's not done yet. Give it a stir, oh, that nice chowder consistency. All right, we have a few key funnel touches to turn this into a true elote chowder. Now I'll come down on my control paddle and hit that saute button and make sure I'm on the more or high setting. If my pot has a start button, I gotta hit that. If it doesn't, it'll start on its own after a few moments of doing nothing. Once the pot is bubbling, I wanna stir in one cup of heavy cream, or you can use half and half. 
as well as a cup of crumbled or grated cotija cheese, which is a wonderful Mexican cheese. If you cannot find cotija, you can simply use grated Parmesan, a cup of that. And stir that into the soup, really making it a chowder now. Okay, and now for some final seasonings, I want to add a packet of taco seasoning. Now, optionally, you can add in a teaspoon of chili powder to the mix if you'd like. It's not very spicy. It's just going to give it a great, nice little color and a little touch there. As well as between one to two teaspoons, I would not exceed two teaspoons, of some seasoned salt. That's only if you feel like it needs a little bit more salt to it after you've added that packet of taco seasoning. Taste it before you do that. That's completely up to you. It's always best to start with less because if you add too much, then you're going to have to add more broth or cream to counterbalance it or even water in that situation. So basically, taste it first after the taco seasoning is added in there and if you feel like it needs more salt that's when you'd add in between one teaspoon start with that of seasoned salt and you can go up to two but again it's all to taste and I'm gonna start all that together and then everything's gonna combine and the flavors are gonna be out of this world delicious and after a few moments of bubbling we're gonna kill the heat on the pot by hitting the cancel button on the control panel and my friends look at this gorgeous delicious elote chowder let's put it in some bowls Right, there we go. Plenty of corn in there. Lovely. And then you can give it a final dusting of some cotilla cheese throughout the edges here. Or Parmesan if that's what you have. And a very light sprinkling of some chili powder if you wish. Okay, voila. Elote chowder. Let's try it out. Okay, my friends, and here it is. Elote chowder. Let's give it a try. Look at all the goodies in this. This is crazy loaded. Here we go. Mm. Mm. I'm so glad there's something for me to rest my tush on back here because I would have fell over from how delicious this is. This is the real deal. Mm. It is so flavorful, so, so freaking good. The potatoes are super soft, like melt in your mouth. All the flavors going on in there with the onion and the peppers and the corn, of course. Just, they just play together very nicely. And by the way, the jalapenos that are in here, I can't even tell they're in there. It's not even spicy at all. I just love me a good loaded chowder. And if you're gonna do it a little Mexican style with a little Mexican flair, I'm there. I love the chili powder. You could also, by the way, add some hot sauce to this if you want, of course, like Cholula, whatever you love, any of your favorite hot sauces. This is a home run, my friends, an absolute home run. Now, remember the seasonings, we're putting a whole packet of taco seasoning in there, which to me isn't an overly salty. So when you're doing that, taste that first, then see how much seasoned salt you want to add, whether it's one to two teaspoons. I definitely wouldn't go more than two teaspoons. And you can add more chili powder if you want. It's also not very spicy in this context because there's a lot of liquid going on. We have a home run with this dish. Mi cocina es muy bueno. How do you say happy in Spanish? Mi cocina es muy feliz. Or uh, I think that's how you say my kitchen's very happy in Spanish. I think it is. Se llama es bueno. Delicioso. <laughs> Why do I do that with like a French accent? I'm so strange. Guys, if you enjoy this recipe and want more like it, check out PressureLoveCooking.com because I have so many of them there. I love soups so much, in fact, that I include them in my cookbooks. Look at this, the original orange book. Speaking of which, it has its Spanish translation counterpart. Very fitting for this, isn't it? The Paso a Paso, the same book translated into Spanish makes me so happy that's available as well. Of course, there's also my other two books, which is my blue book, my lighter book, which you can lighten this up, of course. Instead of using heavy cream, you can use a um, unsweetened non-dairy milk, like an oat milk, a nut milk, a soy milk, anything like that. Um, and check this out for sure. Or this also belongs, this recipe, in my new book, which is not in this book, so maybe I have to do another book. The Yellow Book, Simple Comfort Step-by-Step Step Instant Pot Cookbook, Comfort Food, which is exactly what this amazing chowder is. Thank you again for watching, my friends. And if you try it out, and you want some elote, I promise you, the minute you slurp it, you're gonna say, ole. It's that good, enjoy. Mm, 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 really good.